I want to welcome back to the show one of our most anticipated interviews in season three, Seventh Sign Regime Original, Mr. Majesty. What is up, bro? Thank you for coming back in such a short amount of time. Appreciate it, appreciate it, man. You know, I'm in here with my people. has got my, my family with me, Big Tone. You know, I uh, want to give a shout out to 161, Northside Columbus, Mr. Maj, we back, we here, man. Yeah, bro. Your your interview, I, I don't know if you've had a chance to go through and see, like, the comments and things like that, but, dude, it blew up. It's it's was passed around so much. People were just, like, blown away to even see you know, you, you crossing that bridge and finally coming out and speaking. Uh, have you, have you got a chance to see any of the reaction from the fans on it? Nah, but I did get a call from busy at like three in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I taught, hey, it's funny. I talked to busy and I said, Hey, just so you know, bro, th- th- here's a little bit of what majesty had to say. And, uh, you know, I, I'll save the direct quotes, but they were some real humbling quotes uh, for even us as fans. One of them actually was you talking about how Seventh Sign came out of his pocket, you know, and not like a big company. And it how it just like, even though us as fans should have known that, that realization really was stunning. And he was just like, yo, he said that. He's like, that's, that's deep, man. And uh, I think Busy was real appreciative to hear so many people were – we're just giving him his props for that. Well, yeah. I, and I mean, it just makes sense, right? Because I mean, at the time, obviously we're all in our feelings. We're very young and our egos is definitely a big portion of how we feel, which could be deceptive. So, you know, in hindsight, you know, you're almost over appreciative when you realize how difficult, how hard it is to navigate this world, let alone the music business. So, you know, it, it puts perspective on a lot. You know, and that's why, you know, I'm glad that we were able to maintain a friendship um, and not just be about studios and contracts and record deals. And because those things can become very superficial very quickly. Yeah. Um, And it doesn't really have a leg to stand on when that's the only thing that your relationship is built off. Right. Yeah. I I really enjoyed that about uh, about your interview, because, you know, unfortunately, in in what we do here so many times do we speak to an affiliate that you know now doesn't have contact or has bad feelings and I I think it was real refreshing for for me and even the listeners to hear that you still do have a good uh relationship with busy and and a real appreciation for him so I I think that was kind of what was different about your interview and your interview kind of helped open the doors here for us to do more seventh sign interviews we just had black caesar on tonight in the future right. we're gonna have scales literally found us because of your interview um so i think that we're gonna be able to start to really tell the the seventh sign story we got a lot out of your story but one thing we didn't get that you told me in private and i was like why didn't you fucking bring this up to me you should have told me but i get it like it really had nothing to do with like the bone or anything right. like that right but you were telling me that you are part of a Roots album. Can you tell just everybody about that a little bit more? Because I thought that was crazy. Right. So um, through a childhood friend, Tony Anderson, he knew, um, rest in peace, um, the Roots old manager. So I was able to send an audition tape through Tony to the Roots manager through like maybe five or 6,000 entries for their app that they were doing along with the Roots Undone. So it was going to be a conceptual album undone, but they were going to have an app to kind of go along with it. So I was flew to New York to play Redford Stevens' best friend to describe him. They didn't give us a script. They didn't give us a dialogue. They gave me five to 10 minutes to derive what story I think I could come up with. And I got it in one take, you know, and I was able, so anybody could check it out. I saw Apple um, iTunes, um, it's the undone app. You'll, you'll notice me. So, um, it's like five different characters, but I play his best friend. So I have the longest portion, um, but you can only access it through Apple. That's so um, crazy. It, it, so. If anybody, if anybody in the chat right now has heard that album before, I want you to let us know in the chat if you knew that that was Mr. Majesty on that album. It it blew my mind when you told me that, man. Like, I was just like, this is so cool that 
you know, we, we talked about everything that you did, Seventh Sign and Bone, but that's that's like some totally different stuff. Uh, what About what year did you say that that was that you got involved with that? That must have been all like post um, Seventh Sign. It was... It all came out the same year, so I don't want to give you a bad date, but whatever year the Undone came out, that app came out. Um, so the app is, I believe, is still up. I don't, I don't use an iPhone, um, so but if you have an iPhone, you can access it through through Apple. Yeah, that would have been two. I just looked; that would have been in 2011. Uh, so that was far removed from like you know you being like an active on tour recording artist for seventh sign um at the, at that point what was i guess where were you as far as like you know music had you had you been doing much at that point um, well yeah so yeah like i was telling you before i was doing music videos so i did right. probably 40 music videos in between i don't know maybe 2008 and 2012 locally you know nationally um, you know, so I was definitely moving around and, and doing different things in the industry. And I was still periodically linking up with the guys here and there, um, you know, on spot dates and things of that nature. So I was never, like I said, I was never completely um, out the loop. I just chose to um, take sort of a back seat to do some other things that, that I found to be more rewarding for me at that time. And I think that, you know, picking up the camera and understanding how lighting and cinematography works. I think that that was a perfect gel. And then the fact that I already had certain connections in the industry to, to kind of help me as well. So, you know, it, it worked. Here, here you are, your, your second, you know, you did a full length interview. You're now doing a, a live stream in front of people. Uh, I know you recently started a Instagram, which we promoted during your whole interview. Is this, is this now when we're kind of going to see your return to <clears throat> being more in the, in the loop as far as your fans and, and social media? Cause you've stayed away from this stuff for, you know, for, well, ever. yeah, I mean, yeah, but, but, it, but it would still be gravitated towards substance. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not a, I'm not a hottie out here. I'm not a, I'm not a social media butterfly. I'm none of that. So if I have a project or I have something that I'm promoting or I have something to say, absolutely. Will I be posting every single day? Will I invite people into my home? Probably not, you know? Um, but if they would definitely like to have a very intellectual look at things, um, Mr. Majesty is still the MC they want to go to, you know? Um, I make words sound sexy, you know, that, that's what I do as far as an MC, you know, so um, I understand that we're in a different climate, but if there is a need for a Mr. Majesty album, you know, I, I'd make one. It has to be a need though, right? And because I'm far removed from the demographic you guys deal with, you know, I'm not sure, you know, where it's at. You, you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, but, but absolutely, I did discuss um, some type of duo album maybe a year ago would be to see if that'll work. And I've seen somewhere where um, somebody wanted to maybe do uh, me and Busy a duo album and have Blaze produce it. Um, so, wow, you know, that sounded crazy. That would be right. Crazy. So, yeah, so that sounded really interesting to me. You know, that's something I would um, definitely look into to to see if we could to bring that to fruition even if it was like i said an ep you know eight songs yeah i i will say in our interview when we when we got to that point of a we want to see some sort of reunion whether it's an ep or even one song so many comments about how much fans wanted to see that and and you know what else is crazy is i've never seen in all the interviews we've done, so many people comment and just quote your like lyrics. People made so many comments just quoting your lyrics, uh, and I think that that's like says something special about you that your lyrics were so thought out and delivered so hard that it's like they've stuck with people this long. People quoting lyric after lyric from the Art of War from 1997. Lots of people always get on our interviews and say oh, this was cool, or you should have asked them this, or this was great to hear. But to see that many people quoting your lyrics, it, it was incredible for me. And I, and I mean, that's extremely humbling, right? You, you know, again, you're talking about um, 
something that came from my mind, right? So if it can influence that many people, um, I'm definitely appreciative and humble. So, you know, that, that gives me kind of fuel or it kind of gauges, you know, maybe there is, you know, a fan base out there to where, you know, we can put something out um, of substance. You know, I definitely want to leave a legacy to where at least the Mr. Majesty fans feel like they got a full length album of all of those lyrics and all those quotes and all those, you know, wordplay ideas um, all in one, a cohesive album. Um, you know, I'm definitely willing to look into that, you know, because if they're, you know, if, if they're still remembering quotes, um, obviously it, it's something that stuck with them. Yeah, man. Well, and it's like we talked about in the interview, you know, I think that, I think that your style at that time was so unlike what we'd heard in a Bone album before that it, it just took you being unique and then hitting with, you know, some impact because the, the flip side of that is you could have been a different style and not hit with impact and people could have been like, yo, we hated that. Why the fuck? Why'd you put right. that guy on? You know, so it's like your right. style um, was, was, I guess, doubled down and compounded by the fact that you chose your words uh, just so precisely. Uh, you had mentioned hearing from Busy Bone after your, your interview. I don't want the details, but I'm hoping that that was, all, that was all good and that was all happiness about the situation. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, again, at the end of the day, you know, I would consider that a friend, right? So it's not, you know, and I'm not saying that the music industry is superficial, but, you know, there are a lot more deeper conversations that we usually have. You know, this is m more surface. Um, and also, um, I always understood where I fit in, you know, um, everybody, like I told you before, everybody has a lane. Man. Everybody can be a chief. Some people got to play the indie until they can make it to a chief. Um, but I always understood my lane very clearly. And I never really wanted to, to, um, to rock the boat in any way, simply because in our situation, it was more fruitful to be a, a team player. You know, because we had a group of folks that all were trying to accomplish the same thing. So, the ch the chat right now, I I just I'm gonna I'm gonna just reaffirm in your mind how much people want to hear New Majesty records, so that when you walk away from this, you you really know how much people want to hear it. Uh, the other thing is too that that I don't know if this is possible, but we had talked a lot about, you know, some mixtapes that you would put out. Uh, we had talked about projects that you put out, you know, just post uh, the seven sign experience and people want those too. So if you still have access to those, I know people would love to see even those go up on streaming platforms. Absolutely. So, you know, I'll definitely um, get everything together, but for looking out, what I'm going to do, see, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you um, a copy of the critical thinking with it um the first actually official album that we didn't come out with so you can check it out just so you can see how i was vibing yeah bro. and how things could have sounded you know um to, to kind of see because like i said i think that that album was extremely hip-hop at a time where um we were changing to a sing-song type of situation yeah you know even for b-boy mc such a such as myself yeah, man. I was, so, I was, and I'm not accustomed. That. I wasn't accustomed to that. So, yeah, I would love that. I would love to check that out. Uh, you know, you know, from just us speaking in private, like just, uh, just like all the fans listening. You know, you're you're one of my favorites to to ever rock over any of this this era. And and I think oh. that it's yeah. it says something too that there's affiliates that fans enjoy. Well, they listen to them with bone, but they may not necessarily have the want to listen to them separately. And then there's mm -hmm. guys like Mr. Majesty that were like, yeah, I would, I would listen to a whole Majesty album. So I I'm hope bringing that, I'm bringing that, yeah, because I'm bringing that splash. Yeah, you know what I'm bro. saying? I'm, I'm bringing that, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you what you pay for, you know? Yeah, I, I hope okay. that this has inspired you, this, this entire Beyond the Harmony experience has inspired you to, uh, you know, to dip back into this pool a little bit, knowing 
how much the fans have have missed you know just your presence in in music and you know what the possibilities are there and definitely a busy bone reunion with majesty would blow everybody's mind yeah that would be real dope man i think that you know um because busy is a part of this social media world you know he's you know he's definitely found a fruitful way to navigate through it um you know if he give me some pointers i get some pointers from y'all i think that you know we could definitely make some power moves um because one thing's for certain um you know i definitely still have the ability to um to do what get me you know what, what needs to get done lyrically um but again for me it has to be a want you know, um, because I'm definitely at this point fan based. If yeah. y'all want it, I'm gonna give it to y'all. You know, I don't have yeah. anything I'm holding for myself. You know, all cards on the table at this point. Yeah, bro. Hey, well, they've told us repeatedly that they want it, and whatever I've I've already told you, but whatever we can do with our platform is it's completely your platform so all you got to do is reach out and any music anything you want to do ever bro you you throw the idea at me and it's yours you're you're bth alumni and and we got your back the whole way all right y'all, i want to shout out um my homeboy's homegirl for initially introducing me to to busy i want to shout out the grocery store Kroger's for being there you know what I mean? And making it happen, making the whole connection happen. It's, it's funny how this world goes. Um, but I definitely do appreciate the journey. I appreciate the fans. Um, you know, I appreciate the patience of, you know, understanding that this is a business and there, there are large gaps of time where you don't hear from the artists you like or enjoy uh, due to whatever politics or business or life situations. Um, so just look forward to, you know, some upcoming projects. Y'all keep me posted on what y'all need. I'm going to send you that critical thinking album as well as that mixtape. Um, for real, you can do what you want with those. I own those. So whatever you'd like to do, say, you can I spread the love. Put them out to the fans, bro. They want it. I, yeah. You know, if, if, yeah. if you're about the fans, that's the only reason I'm here is for the fans. So I say we, we yeah. give them what they want, man. Right. Yeah. So I'll just use your platform to do it. Just, you know, give me, you know, a couple, um, couple hot minutes on that and I'll get that to y'all. You got it, my brother. You got it. Hey, listen, the last question and you knew I was going to ask you. And if you don't, if you don't, you know, I'm going to ask you again. Do you remember your verse from Yes, Yes, Y'all? How does it start? If you tell me how it starts. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing about it, bro, is that we have no idea. Busy's verse goes, and then there's a yeah, half um, second where we hear you start to rap, and then they cut that motherfucker off. And we're always like, what was it? So I, I was trying to bring it up. I was trying to see if I could pump it into the mic. Oh. I think it starts with I'm subject. subject. I'm subject, yes. yes, yes yeah, I'm subject. Um... I, I don't know, man. That's going to be like the, the mystery for season four, man. All right. Y'all you know, heard it first. That, right that's, the, that's the mystery for season four, man. We're going to figure out what the hell Mr. Majesty's verse was on Yes, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all heard it. Season four, Mr. Bro. Majesty will be back yep. around. Majesty, I want to thank you, man. You've been such an intricate part of, of season three. It literally has been such an all-star season, and you played such a My big My pleasure, man. I appreciate it, man. You know, I usually don't do this. I told you I, I stay low-key like seashells man <laughs> no I'm, I'm honored that you that you use our platform and and genuine about whatever i can do to to help progress you with reconnecting with the fans say no more i'm there man no doubt man peace much love y'all be easy <laughs>